if I'm ever really sad, I look at my blood donor card. It says B positive. Right, this is your uh, rivers test from year 10, possibly late year nine, depending on when you did it. Um, we're going to go through each of the questions in three separate videos. Have a little watch of these. It will inform uh, any errors you've been making and also uh, your dit work set by your teacher. So question one, stay the diagram below. Uh, complete the diagram using the following terms. Don't use uh, any terms that aren't there. Uh, that will definitely be wrong. So only use the terms that are there. It's a total of three marks, obviously four boxes to fill in. Uh, if you get to this diagram and you have absolutely no idea, my advice is to simply guess. You might notice that at the far left hand corner, if I get the laser pointer up actually, um, you have uh, an area of water that isn't connected to a river. Now if you had to guess from these four, oh look there's a lake there, there's a fairly good chance that is an oxbow lake. So always, always guess, you've got a decent chance of picking up some marks even if you have no idea what an estuary, a floodplain or an oxbow lake is. So always, always guess. The answer is obviously oxbow lake, floodplain, estuary, the tidal part of a river, and obviously a meander or a bend in a river. Likewise, question two. Again, choose the words from this below, three words. Um, it's always worth, if you ever get these word for ones, to read past the gap just to make sure the next sentence doesn't like alter what you're writing, if that makes sense. If you read the second sentence, it might make it easier to work out what the first sentence is. Sediment is moved downstream by rivers in other ways. Small sediments are carried in blank, while larger pebbles are moved along the riverbed in small hops. So we've got to be careful here because the second uh, part of the first sentence is actually defining the second word. Small sediment is carried along in suspension, larger pebbles is jumped in small hops called saltation, and large material is pushed along the riverbed by traction. Um, pretty much, if you don't know those terms, you well, guess, you, you might get lucky. But uh, the reality is, if you don't know those terms, you're not going to be able to access the question. That is why it's crucial that you revise and memorise your transport and your erosion terms. Right, the next two questions we come on to are four mark explain questions. Explain means give reasons why. And when you see explain, I just want you guys to think to use that so what rule. It's a brilliant way of extending your arguments and it ensures that all of your points are, are developing from the same initial point. And as a result of that, you're always going to be answering the question. On a four mark question, you always want to aim for to give two points or arguments, uh, unless the question specifically says only give one, or alternatively, if it's a sequencing question, which there is one in this paper. If you ever get like an explain the formation of something, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you need two arguments, you just need to tell the story uh, all the way through using that so what rule from the beginning, as the yellow box says there. If you are going to give two points slash arguments, uh, the structure there is a point and a so what, and a this means that and then exactly the same uh, the second time through. So our first four marker here, I'll give you a chance to have a little read back through it. Uh, study the photograph showing the effects of river flooding in Somerset in 2014. There's your uh, lovely image. It was in black and white in your test. It makes it slightly more tricky. Uh, and then the question below, explain the likely economic effects of river flooding on this area shown in the photograph. Now, what I'm hoping that you guys have been trained to do is to highlight the key words of the question. You gotta work out what the rubric of the question is. What I mean is, what is the question actually asking you to do? If we go over one slide, when I've gone through this, these are the key terms that I think you need to be highlighting. Explain, obviously, giving reasons why. Economic effect, it has to link to the impact on money. There has to be a financial, either positive or negative, actually, because the next word is effects, which means it could be positive or negative, but it's an impact. So a financial positive impact or alternatively a financial negative impact of river flooding well yeah okay then it's shown as shown in the photograph now then really really important here is it also identifies in the area shown if you were to start talking about um, a university being flooded or a hospital being flooded you wouldn't get the marks here because quite simply you're not answering the question it has to be in the area shown now you guys have actually got boss castle as your example which is uh, a largely similar area to the somerset levels it, uh flood from 2014 so you actually have a little bit of an advantage here whereas if you were doing a city flood like i don't know exit 1960 a disadvantage here because the effects are going to be slightly different so you've got to use the image you have got to use this image to make this point 
Now, using the image, I think the first two most obvious uh, things you can spot that are flooded are fields in the background, which you'll notice are quite rectangular, uh, therefore probably a farmer's field. And also we've got, um, obviously, houses, uh, residences being flooded as well. There are some other ones. You may well be able to argue that's a school in the middle. You'd probably get away with that. Alternatively, you could go for roads, obviously, being flooded and cars also being flooded as well. So in terms of the answer here, uh, I'll start with the farmer's field up here. Have a little look for your points. So this means that farmers fields have been submerged by water. Yeah, you can see it in the image. So their crops, e.g. strawberries, a little bit of exam advice here. If you ever write crops or animals or jobs, always clarify, always put an example. It just makes the examiner think, oh, this person does know what they're talking about. They're giving specifics. So e.g. strawberries will be drowned. This means the farmer has no crops to sell and will make less money. Now, if I'm being honest, that's probably got your two marks at that point anyway. However, let's add that this means that as well, just so that we get that additional extra third point if we can. This means less money will be spent in the local economy because the farmer has less disposable income. So what I mean is if your farmer's field, all his strawberries have uh, been drowned and died here, your farmer can't spend in the local corner shop. Let's just pick a building for a corner shop this one in here perhaps and that therefore means that the local economy is also negatively affected by his strawberries being flooded so in, in reality that's probably gonna get you three marks in this question rather than just two we, we do need um a second point because it's effects sir we need a plural so we need a second effect um houses have also flooded uh meaning electricals like tvs will be damaged uh, residents will need to claim on their insurance. Now, a few of you in your answers were saying that the council pays out for insurance. That's not true. Uh, businesses pay out for insurance. You might have seen the terrible TV advert selling you uh, insurance through like, you know, those compare the market websites. It's actually a company that will provide insurance. So when you claim on your insurance, what that therefore means is your insurance premium and that of your neighbours actually will rise in the future. So people living in this town are likely to have less disposable income in the future. So just to recap there, insurance is sold by a company. If you claim on your insurance, uh, that, that therefore means that the prices are likely to rise in the future. Ask parents about this. If they claim on their car insurance, as an example, their premium will have increased. Even if they weren't at fault in the accident themselves, their insurance premium would increase. So the answer there on the right hand side is definitely going to be four marks all day long. Right, the next one, probably the worst uh, answered question in this Rivers test. Feature Z, uh, labelled on the photograph above as a floodplain, explain the formation of a floodplain. Right then, uh, hopefully this really identifies to you the importance of revision. If you do not revise for a test on rivers or coasts and you get a landform question, it's very unlikely you can make your way up through this question. You need to literally know how all of your landforms for rivers and coasts are formed. So first thing I want you to do, obviously, to highlight the key words of the question. This one's relatively straightforward. There's only three. Explain, give the reasons why. Formation, I'm not interested in the long term uh, here for a floodplain or the management of a floodplain. I'm only interested in how the floodplain is formed and obviously floodplain uh, as your key term. Don't get me wrong, there are other um, features you can spot. You can spot some meanders, potentially an estuary here as well. Um, I'm sure we could spot, so we can say some farms and some woodlands and you know all the rest of cliffs down here the reality is i'm not interested in any of those though i am only interested in the formation of a flood plain so only tell me about the flood plain right then um this question was answered relatively poorly if i'm being honest so the model answer is popped up on the board for you there Really important to identify that a floodplain is formed due to the deposition of a river when it floods. Floodplains are found in the lower course, and the reason for that is explained there, where um, rivers are more likely to flood in the lower course on the grounds that they have more water in them. Uh, all the tributaries adding water into the river would be a good reason to explain uh, why that is. In addition, they're likely to have a lot of suspended sediment because throughout the river's course, we've had erosion all the way through the upper and middle and now into the lower course. And that therefore means the river is likely to have quite a lot of suspended sediment within it. When a river bursts its banks, because it's likely to do so here, as we've already explained, when the water uh, escapes out of the river banks, it very quickly hits into grass, as you can see here, which is uh, going to cause friction. Actually, within the uh, banks in here, it's actually, uh, sorry, within the channel here, it's actually quite smooth uh, and the water runs quickly. When it then 
uh, burst out onto uh, your grassy banks, that's going to slow it down, that concept of friction being applied, and it therefore means that the water cannot carry uh, the load as it was within the channel. It therefore drops the heaviest load like boulders first, forming levees uh, either side of the river channel. However, uh, smaller sediment like sand and silt, which isn't blocked by those levees, can be carried further away, and that will eventually be deposited further away from the um, river when the water loses momentum. That then builds up a layer of silt or alluvium or clay, and that happens every time, which therefore builds up this flat area, uh, a floodplain in the lower course. So floodplains are a little bit tricky. Come and ask me down in HA if you want me to talk you through it again, but a model answer there on the board for you.